Hey guys, it's Margaret and happy Valentine's Day. Today I'm bringing you a Q&A video about Etsy. So these are some questions that I have been asked um, in videos or on Facebook, different places uh, about Etsy. And I am doing this live, so if you show up and you have a question, just throw it into the chat and I will answer it for you the best I can. So again, welcome. If you are new to my channel, my name is Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures, and I am a reseller, stay-at-home mom. I make lots of videos about ways to make extra money. And if you are here and you are new, welcome. Why not join along and subscribe? So hello, I've got a few friends in the chat already. Hi, Lorraine and Diane, and hello, Melissa. How's it going? <laughs> yes, caught me right at the beginning. All right, so I have some questions that I've been asked um, over the last few weeks, I guess, and some of them are, are ones that I get frequently, so I will jump right in. Uh, a few more people jumping into the chat. Hi, Kelly and Felicia. Hi, Jill. <laughs> Hi, my sales rock, Kristen and Michael. Hello. Hello, Mel and Kintry. Di Double Diamonds and Michelle again. Hello. Okay. So if you guys have more questions in the chat, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them um, if I can. All right. So one of the first questions that I'm going to answer is from Jill Norton. She asked, uh, thanks so much. I'm excited to give Etsy a go. Is there a way for customers to make offers on Etsy? So if you are an eBay seller, you know you can set up a um, best offer feature where people can click on it and send you an offer. Um, well, there's not a feature necessarily like that on Etsy, but I'm going to show you what I do because I'm always open to offers because I'm in the business to sell stuff, you know, not keep stuff in my house. So let me show you my, the, my um, shop on Etsy and I'll show you what I do. And I do get people from time to time send me offers through message. So here's my shop. Let me make it bigger so you can see it a little better. Oh, maybe not. Here we go. One more try. There we go. So here's my shop. And down here, I have a shop announcement. And in the shop announcement, let me make sure it's presenting where you can see it. Yep. Okay. Uh, it says, you'll find all sorts of vintage and antique items here. I'm always willing to negotiate reasonable offers in bulk mailings. Just shoot me a message. So I think if you put something in your announcement, um, letting the buyers know that and if you're really really into it you could put it into your actual listing um, let me show you my listings real quick because I have you know the part that I write where it's like the description and the measurements and all that but then I have a set um, that I put into every single listing um, and I just copy and paste it so let me show you what that is and you could put it there I'm not sure if I have it there or not now that I think about it so let's say on this bracelet um, there's the part that link scrolling. So here's the part where I just talk about it and the measurements and all this. Everything past the dotted line is stuff I add on to every single listing. So I talk about international buyers. And so this could be another place that I could put something like, I'm always interested in, you know, making a best offer, you know, whatever. Putting it, you could write something in your listing as well to let people know um, that that you're open to offers. Uh, so let's see in the chat. I've got a couple questions in the chat already. Lots more friends there. Hello, Carol and Christine and Beauty for Ashley. Hi, Katie. What you selling? And Purple Lily. And then Helen has a question. Uh, what about shipping? Do you pay for it up front before receiving payment? Uh, no, I don't. So when, here, I'll go back to the same listing. Um, and you can, I'll show you how that works. So... I set up the shipping, um, here's my shipping and policies. So I set up my shipping and then the buyer can put in like where they are in the world or what their zip code is. Let's say I'm, let's say I'm living in 90210 land, 90210. Um, and so it'll tell me, it'll adjust what the shipping is and then that gets tacked on to the price. Let's say I'm in the UK it's going to cost you $22. And this is why in my in my listing I put international buyer send me a message because this is really probably higher than it needs to be because I go let's say I put in China or the far or the farthest place away from me and I figure out that's what my shipping is going to be. So um that's why I ask international buyers to send me a message and I can give them a more precise um a more precise 
shipping cost and I can adjust it if they're interested in, in buying the item. Um, but it would be really time consuming for me to go through every single country and fill in like the shipping price for every single country out there. So that's why I do it that way. <laughs> the furthest place or Australia or like something like that and then just let them know. And generally if the shipping goes well over what um, it actually costs me to ship, I refund the difference. You know, within if it's more than like two or three dollars over, then I I refund because that's not right. All right, yeah, Tina in the house. Hey Jane. Hi Felicia. Um Guillermo, this is what I have on my shop. I will always consider reasonable offers and also we can negotiate a price that we're both satisfied with on the item. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Perfect. Um hi Stacy from Illinois. Um, is there a way to cross post from eBay to Etsy? There is. It's called manually. <laughs> if I was a programmer and I knew how to write this program, then I could make a ton of money. But I do it, um, and I think I actually did a video of it. I usually list on Etsy first because it takes me a little bit longer, and then I just copy it over, you know, copy and paste over onto eBay. So, what is a production partner? I'm not sure if you're asking somebody in the chat. Or if you're asking me, <laughs> a production partner, is, there, is that something you saw in one of my listings? Because if so, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, so let me jump to the next question. Um, and if I don't answer it sufficiently, uh, ask a follow-up question and I'll be more clear. Um, Joe Bro says, I was thinking about selling on Etsy. What is the best way to get items, item views of your um, views of your items? The best way I found when I very, very first started was I made sure I did a lot more with pinning my items or doing Pinterest parties and things like that. Um, there are teams within Etsy that you can do that with, or you can go to like a one of our groups like International League of Thrifters where we have those watch my items or, well, we don't, you can't really watch your item, but you can favorite it on Etsy. Um, so that's one way. Um, that's generally the best way, I think. <laughs> so, hi, Sherry. Just started. You're in luck. Okay, so yeah, that's the best way I think get, of getting views on your items. Um, yeah, so next, um, and Jill also asked if I had any pricing tips. And generally, because I do cross post on eBay and Etsy, um, most of the time I do a bit of a higher price because people tend to be willing to spend more on Etsy. Um, and then on eBay, I'll put that same price. But because I have the buy it, you know, or the um, best offer feature on eBay, I don't feel too bad about that. If mine is, you know, if there's a lot of items the same it, it, that are priced lower, I don't, I'm not too bothered by that because they can send me an offer. And if it's reasonable, I'll accept it. And yeah, so there's that. Um, hey, Karen. Hi, Donna. <laughs> Catskill Mountains. Awesome. Okay. And the next question is from Vintage Apartment. Um, I have to admit, this is the third time I've tried it selling on Etsy. No sales, giving up and give up and close up shop. I wish I knew what I was doing wrong. I have only about eight things in the shop, that and they've been favored by other people's, but no sales. Sign frustrated. Actually, Pam, LOL. So, um, one, I say don't give up. It it looks best to have your front page filled, and I think that's about twelve or eighteen items. So. Try to get at least the front page filled so you look like you're a shop that's kind of fleshed out. Of course my doorbell's ringing right now. Why wouldn't it? Hang on one second. James, come here. <laughs> of course I'm live and the doorbell's ringing. Who is it? Just look at it. Just see if it's the postman, but don't open it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so now I've lost my train of thought. I'm like, okay, stranger danger. Um, yeah, so make sure your front page is fleshed out with items um, to start with. And don't give up. I'm trying to listen to talk and listen to what my kids are saying. What, babe? Seriously? Come here. Hang on. Did they go away? Did the man leave? Oh, okay, we're good, we're good. Okay. Thank you, baby. <laughs> it was the postman. He just drops the packages and ding-dongs and leaves. So, whew, okay. So, all right, let me jump back to that. Um, so, yeah, I would say make sure the, the front of your shop is kind of fleshed out so when someone lands on your page, it doesn't look like you're just 
kind of sh not a established shop is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's one. And I think two, I was going to say, if you're in a group that, allows this and I'm going to talk with our admins because I want us to be able to allow this is if you have a listing that you are wanting um, suggestions about say you know hey guys you know I'm not getting any hits on my shop post a link to your shop with permission from the admins if, in whatever the rules in the group is and just say hey can you guys go look at my group my um, li my shop my listings and tell me what I could be doing better because I think that's a great way to learn as long as you're not too thin-skinned and people are constructive with their criticism and not too harsh um, then I think that's that's a really good way to do it too to have people come in and give you tips it can be overwhelming if you've got a lot going on but I I think it could be helpful having another set of eyes just kind of looking at it so yeah um, and I'll talk to our our, our admins and at International League of Thrifters and see about if that's something that is a possibility not pushing your items like, come on, come buy my stuff, because we'll delete that real fast. But I'm looking for help, right? Um, all right, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, I am scrolling back a little bit. I missed some questions in the chat. Just started. Yay. Hi, Mel. Hey, Karen. And Stacy. Okay. Tubal Awesome. I think I'm saying your name right. It says, just signing in. Why eBay over Etsy? What are the advantages? Um, what goes where? Sorry if you've already talked on this. I haven't, but it was coming up, so perfect timing. So I do eBay and Etsy. Um, I post everything I can. I post pretty much everything on eBay, and then anything that I can put on Etsy, I will, whether it, it's vintage, which is 1998 or before, a supply, um, what else? <laughs> I just thought a crap, like I don't do really handmade stuff, but supplies generally and vintage stuff. Um, the fees on Etsy are super duper low. Uh, it's 20 cents to list an item, and that lasts for four months. And then there's no shop fees, there's no shop levels. Um, when you sell an item, it's about 3.5% um, uh, in the fee. So the fees are way lower as well. So I love, love that. Um, and then there's a lot more with, with Etsy, it's more personal between you and your customer. There's a whole lot less interference from the company. I mean, I never have to call Etsy customer support for this, that, or the other, you know, like I'm calling eBay for, you know, a rude buyer. Or I don't know. I'm never, I never had, never have had to call Etsy ever. You know, I don't even know their phone number, you know? So it's just way more seamless to me. Um, and let's see what goes where. I think I answered that. Let me know if I missed something, but, but let me don't, don't, but let me don't forget, <laughs> let me not forget that in the description box down below, if you're considering starting on Etsy, there's a promotion going on right now where you can get 40 free listings. If you click on my link, you'll get 40 free listings, and then I'll get 40 free listings too. Um, and so you'll be basically be starting for free. You get to post 40 things for free because there's no shop fee, no setup fee. I think they ask for your your e your PayPal and maybe a credit card because the way they, they pull fees is a little different. So they're not going to charge anything to your credit card unless you accrue fees. But generally what I do once I make a sale, I just go through it where it says my bill and it'll pull it out of my, my sales for my money from there. So no biggie. Okay. Glenda says spend a dollar a day for advertising. I'm going to have to talk to you about that, Glenda. I've, I've done advertising on Etsy in the past. I didn't see a whole lot from it, but maybe I'm not doing it right. You know, they have it for a reason. Donna asks, do I use social media to promote your my listings? I do. I mean, I'll do a, the Pinterest party we have going in our group um, each day. I try to do it every day. Uh, and then when I first started, I was a lot more diligent about um, pinning my own items. Like I have um, like Pinterest boards, let's say for men's accessories. Um, so I would pin cufflinks and tie tacks and things like that there. But I wouldn't just spam it with all my stuff. I would also go through and pin stuff from like GQ or guys that are looking sharp. So it's a, a board that somebody like a dude on Pinterest would want to follow, <laughs> right? Because it, it'll have like all these style things like how to tie a tie and how to wear whatever, you know, and just so it, it wasn't just, and then within all of that, I would post my items as well. So subliminal by my stuff, <laughs> right? Um, let's see. Sounds like a great 
video series. Uh oh, I missed what it was. Um, hi, Grand Bargain Finder. Christian Curiosities. I didn't have my first sale on Etsy for six weeks, and then it was really slow. Picked up with the more listings I got on. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it did take time when I first started. It took a little time, but now you know the ball's rolling, and I do okay. So, pardon me. Carol says on Etsy, do you have to pay for advertising? They have a they have a way where you can do advertising on Etsy. If you look at Etsy, you'll see um, ads that people have paid for. Let me pull up Etsy, and, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, and I haven't done it in a while. Maybe I ought to do an experiment. Let's shop. Let's see. Let's do cufflinks, just because I was talking about that. And I'll show you what I mean by, by, by ads. So here along the top, ad, ad, ad. These are people that are paying for that space. And I think you have to pay by hits or something like that. And then you'll go about halfway down the page, there'll be another row. Here we go. Add, 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 add. So they're kind of like at the beginning and they're at the middle. They'll sprinkle it in there for you. Um, so there's that. Okay, let me stop that. Stop, please. And then Devil Diamond says, do you get shipping discounts when your item sells like eBay is? I think so. I have to double check on that. But I think I pay, I'm, I'm, my brain is thinking about like padded flat rates and then my six by four by fours that I ship out a lot. They tend to be about the same. So I think so. I think you do, but I'll have to double check. I will find out. <laughs> Let's see, Jill, I think, Jace, uh oh, did Jill ask a question? Um, oh, okay, Jill. So here's another one. Is there a way to search for sold comps on Etsy, pardon me, in Etsy to see similars and what they've gone for? I know that the way I do it, I mean, you can go to a person's shop and see their solds, and then you can copy the URL and put it into Flipper Tools to find out the sold price. And then when I'm searching, there's not a way like on eBay where you go to sold on on Etsy. There's not a way to really do that. But when I do a search for an item, I'll do a Google image search and it'll pull up frequently things that have sold on Etsy. They don't go away. Like on eBay, after like three months, the solds are gone on, on Etsy. They're there forever. You know, so far <laughs> they are. So you could see something that sold five years ago on Etsy. Um, so that's why I do it that way. I'll, I'll search through Google images. And then when the item pulls up, if you've watched my haul videos where I do the research, um, I do. It happens at almost every one. You know, I'll, have to, I'll find the picture of it, but it's been sold on Etsy, and I'll go and put it into Flipper Tools to find the sold price. And Jill said, uh, Kelly says, I think Jason has an app for that. I think it's yeah. I'll have to find out from Jason. He's talked to me about it before. Stacy says, Do you take different pictures for Etsy? I don't. Let me find one that I can show you. You can only post five pictures on Etsy, um, and so what I do is I will have a collage. Oops, I've got the wrong. Let me grab the wrong. Right, let me grab the right screen. I should say. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find one. Like I think I did a collage on this one. I don't normally use a collage for my first picture. Stop. No, I didn't do a collage on that one. Um, way to get it in there to get extra stuff in there. I'm trying to find one that I have. For sure, used a collage on that had a lot of details. Come on, load it for me. Oh, brother. Okay, did I do a collage on this one? I know on, um, nope, darn it. <laughs> Maybe this one. After this one, I'm giving up. I'm not going to keep looking. Okay, I lied. I'm going to keep looking. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. So you can do a collage, and I'll basically just I would for eBay and Etsy and then I'll go and make a collage with some of them for Etsy because eBay I think really doesn't want you to do collages so that's how I get around that on Etsy if I want to have more pictures in there sorry I couldn't pull one up real fast for you if I'll find one maybe as we're talking I'll show you let's see uh, I missed something no I don't take different pictures um, Chicken Coop says, I hear the stuff that happens on eBay that has never happened to me on Etsy. Yeah, yeah. Like, generally, the customers are really good, and I've never had a problem ever. So, let's see. Do, no, I don't need that. Okay. Stacy says, do you add more backstory to the description on Etsy or just co copy the eBay description as, as is? Do you mean in my listings or my, like, personal story? My personal. Um, 
I just do like what I, yeah, like what I did. I'll show you. I, I generally have a template that I use, not like a third party plugin template. But on this item, the man in the moon, the first, my generally what I do is I'll take the title, and that'll be my first line, and then I'll have description, blah 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 blah, condition, blah blah blah, you know, measurements, and then I started doing this inventory note. This will tell me because I'm I'm really bad about remembering what I paid for it. So this is not really an, where it is in my room. This is really a a code for me to help me remember how much I bought it for. So that's what that is. <laughs> and then the rest of this is just I copy and paste into every listing. Uh oh, where my part go about the international listers? Okay, I must have cut it off by accident. So yeah, that's I don't know. I mean, when I first started, I used to like write a story, and I was like, man, this is taking forever. It's for the birds. So I've stopped doing that. <laughs> it, it, but some people do. I don't do it. Um, and let's see. Hi, Jenny. My sales rock, Margaret. That's the only way that I started my shop was to put in ads. Okay, okay. Um, we pay per click. That's what I thought. Okay, on, on Etsy. It's quite expensive to advertise. We spend about 15% of our pricing on, ooh, on Etsy advertising. Oh, yes, Mary Lou says, don't forget to click the thumbs up. Let's see how many we've got. 14 thumbs up, 70 viewers. Come on, people. We can do this. Um, all right. Uh, clear eye sky oh clear eyed sky okay it's hard to read when they're all squished together um so does everything have to be true vintage or handmade or can it be vintage look handmade ish um it has to be it has to be vintage so because people will come out like they're not going to come after you but there will be people that message you and let you know like this item is not really vintage you know so but 1998 is not you know what i mean it's pretty not that long ago, I hate to say. Um, and then handmade handmade has to be handmade by you if you're going to post it as handmade. Um, but a lot of things that you would not think of could be posted as a supply. Like let's say wrapping paper or fabric or pens or, I mean, just, just anything you can whatever you've got, it can be listed as a supply, uh, Scrabble tiles, you know, I've got a bunch of Scrabble tiles, they're maybe not vintage, but they can be listed as a supply, because somebody, as long as it's something that somebody's going to use in a craft, you know, or like, I have this, where is it, somewhere around here, it's a Snoopy, a Snoopy scrapbook, you know, blank scrapbook, but it's not old, it's like, it's like from last year or something, but I can list it on Etsy, because it's a supply that somebody will use to create a scrapbook so that's something you can do too um great silver pirates have just joined etsy today um etsy now allows buyers to block their sales history i saw that i did i went um I, I was looking at somebody's and their little sale thing was black and i couldn't click it um i have no problem to come look at my stuff it's cool you know i don't know why they would want not want people to see their sales stuff but i guess everyone has their reason so um correction etsy now allows sellers yeah sellers to block their sales history from being viewed true um glenda says i get a lot of views on items that have never sold yeah me too that's cool uh oh i clicked a button and i didn't mean to okay uh silver parts question do you sell the same item on two selling platforms at the same time uh and when it sells take down the other yes yes i do so I have the, you know, have both apps on my phone, Etsy and eBay. So when something sells, you know, and it goes cha-ching, both, both sites do the cha-ching on their app. So as soon as, and my boys know, if they hear a cha-ching on the phone, they go grab the phone and bring it to me. And then I, I just check and then take it down off the other site. So easy peasy. I do. And I think only once, I have a lot of people say, what do you do if it sells at the same time? Maybe one time that's happened. There have been a couple times where I haven't, taken it down or I thought I did or I relisted it by accident and that's happened a couple times but maybe once a year watch me say that and it's going to happen like next week <laughs> uh, oh good blessed life says I'm watching you phot photographing my items cool uh, I stopped all that fluffy stuff oh yeah you mean with like the fluffy the wording and all those stories and stuff okay uh, total experimenting ink code do you use any coupons I've heard of people using coupon codes yes I do I have, like, here, let me grab one. <laughs> I'm going to reach to my shipping stuff right here. Reaching. I don't want to fall over. 
So like here's my my thank you card that I put in my packages and then on the back as a big thank you 15% off if you enter treasures at checkout. It's funny one time I put, I was talking about this in the video and it was like you saying here's the code enter treasures and my husband was like Margaret you just told everybody your coupon code now they're all going to go buy stuff <laughs> use your code I'm like awesome <laughs> do it <laughs> it's cool yeah so uh, that's that's what I do generally and sometimes um I haven't done it in a while I actually didn't do it this year for Christmas time last year at Christmas like where my shop banner is up at the top you can change that out let me pull it up and uh, when I changed it out last year I put like a Christmas coupon code up there like hey welcome to my shop and for coming for Christmas whatever you know so this part up here where it says Texas Gal Treasures, you can change that out. I used to do it like I put a, like something more seasonal and then have like coupon code for December. Off oh, whatever. You know. So that's a good idea, Margaret. You should do that. Why didn't you do that for Valentine's Day? <laughs> so yeah, I'll try that. I'll try that. Um so I'm looking Hi, monkey boy, win. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Stacy says, do you find that if you don't see the items on Facebook sites right away, it won't sell, or do you leave item up, items up there for a while? <clears throat> I, yeah, it's kind of both. Like, sometimes things sell pretty quickly, and sometimes they sit. And generally, I'm going to leave things alone and let them just be until they sell kind of deal. Mary Lou, do you sell your junk jewelry lots on eBay or Etsy? Well, when I finally get them listed, I'm going to do both because on Etsy, even if it's not old jewelry, since I'm selling it as a crafter's lot, then I can sell it there because it'll be considered a supply. Pardon me. I'm going to pull my hair up. It's driving me nuts today. You know, you have those days. Sorry. I'm just going to pull it back because it's. I'm going to keep messing with it, and that's going to annoy you more in the long run. Trust me. <laughs> Let's see. Glenda says handmade can be mass produced, but you have to get permission from Etsy. Yeah, this is true. Like it has to be somebody in your shop that has made it. But yeah, you have to have a whole. There's a process to go through to, to have it done like that. Um, Jenny says I've been meaning to ask you when you're selling wrapping paper. Do you ever sell cut pieces? I have a whole bunch, but I ha but most have been cut. Yeah, I have. Um, and then I just show like where it's cut or. And normally it still sells, so I actually have some now that I need to go through and and take pictures of, but it's cut, you know. It still will sell, you know, because if somebody's using it for a scrapbook or something like that, or just they're going to decoupage a box, I don't know. <laughs> they might want that. Hey, Gina. J Jenny says, I forgot to take a sale down today. What do you do? I sold the same item. I'm going to message him and tell him, sorry, it's not in stock shrug. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, if it happens, unfortunately for my Etsy buyer, that's the one that I'm going to be calling, or not calling, but messaging and saying, you know, I'm terribly sorry, but there was a mistake in the listing. The item is no longer in stock, you know, and I'm refunding your money. So, I, I, you know, I mean, that's just the way it has to be. Per, because if you do that on eBay, you can get a... um what's the word a defect you know the way or they, you know they changed the system so yeah um, Kelly says what a great idea I love the code for the discount I have a very specific niche on Etsy and I need another reason for customers to come back yeah copy copy um, <clears throat> and Karen says how often do repeat buyers use your coupon codes that's a really good question because I never check I never do every now and then I'll have somebody when they leave their um, comment about the item they'll say something like you know return buyer or something like that. I just never go in there and look. Maybe I ought to. <laughs> I <have time. laughs> um, and Marlo asks, uh, hi, when listing wrapping paper, do you refer to pricing per sheet? Do you separate if there are two sheets in the package or multiple prints in the package? Thanks. If the package is still sealed, generally I just sell it like that. Um, that's a good question. I guess it just depends because I think I've done it both ways where it was really awesome. You know, like Kate has got some Barbie wrapping paper, and each page is different. And I'm like, their Barbie people are nuts. You know, they're nuts for Barbie stuff. I'm like, sell each sheet separately. You know, I mean, you could do a lot, but then I'm like, 
you could get $15 a sheet for that. You know what I mean? So sell that as, you know, as a lot, not as a lot, rather separate it out. So it kind of depends. Like as, I had some that were like, they look floral, but like wallpaper floral looking. I don't know how to describe it. That I sold all together. Um, so it just kind of depends on how awesome the sheets are. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> Nevada says, but then again, it's like, what? who am I to say what's awesome, right? Then I start thinking like that, and then I don't want to sell them in lots. <laughs> Nevada says, do you have to charge state sales tax in Texas? This is one of the things that's been holding me back from getting into online selling. <clears throat> We're supposed to charge California sales tax to interstate buyers. Ooh, see, that's different in Texas. I only have to collect sales tax from people who buy from me in Texas. So if people buy from me somewhere else, I don't pay, pay the sales tax on that. Um, so I do do that, do do that. Um, probably what I would do is just, since if you're a Californian, if you have to charge it for everybody, I would just incorporate it into my price and just know like, okay, because in Texas it's like 8.25%. So I would just add on that 8.25%. I don't know what it is in California. Um, and then just, yeah, like I say, incorporate it. Um, total exterminating. When people favorite your items, do you, do I message them? No, <laughs> I don't. Um, I, I just don't. <laughs> Chicken coop. Yes. Just about the time you start thinking I should have bought that to sell. It sells. You just never know. Yes. How do I package my wrapping paper? Do I add cardboard to protect it? And you know, I need to redo the video cause I did a video for that and I don't do it that way anymore. I have these, um, poly mailers and I have cardboard. I can grab it. I'll try to grab it. I'll show you my shipping area. It's so much cleaner. But yeah, so I have like these bits of cardboard up here. Not that. Not that either. This all gets messy. So I have these bits of cardboard I keep. And then I have my, look, this is how it gets messy. I just drop it. So it goes in one of these. Slips in. Slips in one of these. Slips in one of these. And we're good to go. All right? Easy. That's what I do. Okay, and look, that's how, it, that's how it gets messy on my table. Because I just, all this stuff fell over, and what did I do? I just left it there. <laughs> I'll put it up. Um, put it back in a minute. How much do you normally get per sheet, Jenny says? It depends on the paper. Um, probably, usually the lowest, like if it's a cut piece, it's like, man, I probably put it between $7.99, $9.99. But I've had some wrapping paper sell for $20. I mean, I think that might be the highest. But I could be wrong. <laughs> I have a one that just sold. I'm trying to see if it sold on Etsy. I can show you. Um, yeah, it did. So let me share with you that. And this was one that I was just like, meh, it's okay. Um, but it just sold. Oh, maybe I shouldn't because it's going to show you who the buyer. Let me see if I can find a way. Here, I'll click on it so you can't see. It sold for $14.99. Hang on, I'm clicking on it. I'm trying to keep my buyer. I'm protecting my buyer. Okay. So this one sold for $14.99. Silver foil gift wrap. I need to package that up and take it to the post office. But look, it's just like this silvery and it's got these this stuff on it. Like that. One sheet. $14.99. That's what that sold for. Oh, I just closed that out. Hope I don't need it again. I will. Let me open it back up. Never mind. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so yeah, wrapping paper. Um Carol says the new PayPal rules are not out for international and the prices are up again. Oh, I'll have to look at that. Okay. Oh, Nevada said I'm an in-state. Okay, yeah. And on, on eBay, I have it set up where only my Texas buyers pay extra, but that's on eBay. On Etsy, I just, it's just in there, you know. Um, Jenny says, I used to message people on Etsy when I first started but I got messages from Etsy and they basically said if I didn't stop, my shop would be canceled. Right? Because it's like you're spamming people when you're messaging them, messaging them like, hey, I saw you favored my thing, you know? Yeah. Because imagine if, if somebody's just favoriting a lot of stuff and then every single person that that they favorited sent them a message. Could you imagine how many messages you would, you would be so turned off by coming to the site? I would. Yeah. Um. Beauty for Ashley, how much were your thank you cards and where did I get them from? These I got from Vista Prints and they were not that, I don't remember because I ordered a ton of them. So I haven't had to do it in over a year because I ordered a lot. But yeah, I got a QR code. So like if you click on, you know, if you do the QR code, I don't know why, I just thought it was cool to do that. There's like an app you can do it, you know, get a QR code and it just takes you to my Etsy page. 
you know, I don't know why I did it, just for fun. To have something out. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, but yeah, Vista Prints is where I got them from. Um, yeah, get that wrapping paper listed. I have a whole tub down here I gotta get listed. But I've been on such a jewelry kick lately. And it's so easy. Like how many pic how many pictures can you get out of this, right? So uh yeah, Melissa says, spammy people on social media are annoying. I, uh, that's why I'm really careful about what I pin on Pinterest. For real girl, 42, Vista Prince is having a sale now, so go check them out. Jenny B, do you think that listing every day on Etsy will get more views or favor a lot of shops items? Well, here's the thing. Yeah, I because when you list something, it it's unless they change the way they do it. Um, it's towards the top of the page, right? When you list something new. So the longer it's on there, the, the newer things that get listed are on the top, right? So a lot of people, I, I don't do this all the time, but sometimes even before their items are up for renewal, like, cause when you pay 20 cents, it's good for four months. So sometimes people will go through some of their items and renew them before the four months is up just to bump them up into the top of the search again, you know, into the top of the listing thing. Um, so unless they've changed it, that's the way it is. So yeah, I think not necessarily listing for that particular item, but it gets your shop seen a little more because of that, unless they've changed it. So um, Christine said, one question. You said you make less money in the weeks you don't list, but why? You have more than 800 items in your shop probably just for that reason you know just the views yeah Celia says now that you're live I can't remember my questions <laughs> leave them in the comment section down below I, I think Christine that's why it's just like you're not as high up in the search I mean even for that same somebody may be browsing around clicking on something that has, is yours and they go to your shop and they see something else or yeah it just happens. I don't know. And I think Jeff was saying yesterday, it's a myth. It's a myth. I'm like, but it. every time I really get busy listing, things sell. And it's not always the things I listed. So whatever. Who knows? <laughs> this will be one of the mysteries of life. We'll find out one day. Um, yeah, Melissa says, as a consumer, I like seeing new things on shops, whether retail or online. Yeah. Uh, so every four months, ST charges a 20 cents relisting fee. You do it manually. I, I don't know if there's a way to do it not manually. I wish I'd have saved it because I just relisted some stuff. I'll show you what, where you go and see. So here's my Etsy shop. Let me pull this open. Um, and when you go into your Etsy shop, view shop, listings, here's listing manager. So this, I love this feature, by the way. <clears throat> when it loads, it's awesome. So over here, I can, where it says expired, so things that are expired will come here, and then you can click on it, and then you can just, you know, click all of them and renew, <clears throat> like so. But yeah, if I want to search, you know, cufflinks, this will pull up all the cufflinks, like here's how many I have active, these are ones that sold out, these are inactive. So basically the inactive ones are the ones that sold on eBay. I go and deactivate them when they're sold on eBay. You get to be, look, here we go. You get to be realistic because you were just returned. So activate. <laughs> there we go. Da, 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 just that easy. 20 cents. We're good to go. So stop screen sharing. Okay. So Stacy says, I have a funny story. I was excited to see live and press play, but the comments were not matching what you were saying. So I just re reloaded YouTube and somehow I was on old video. Uh-oh. Jenny says, I got one of those accordion hook hangers. Oh, you! I saw this question. You posted this somewhere else, right? I, and it's blue, and it's and it's not very well painted. What I still list is really big. Stop. Stop. Let me stop screen sharing. Um, yeah, I would list it. I had a green one. I don't know if the green one's old. But anyway, I've had some funky looking ones. And they, because the, the thing is, either people want that rustic look, or they're going to repaint it anyway. So I would just list it, and if it's really big, charge a lot of money. Because <laughs> I get like 24, 25 bucks. And then when, when I said something about like getting uh, 20, 25 bucks for it, uh, somebody messaged me and was like, wow, I just got 30 for one of those. Like, man, I need to raise my prices. So um, are you paid monthly from Etsy? Okay, beauty, from Ashley, beauty for Ashley, I should say. This was another one of our questions. So yeah, let me answer that. So. Um, 
basically with Etsy, you can, it doesn't, okay, I'm trying to word it correctly. So in the last video I did where I was talking about the 10 things that you might want to know if you're going to sell on Etsy, I say that um, Etsy will deposit your money every two weeks. And then uh, Ivelos asked, is the two weeks a new thing or a new seller thing? He says, I've had Etsy for years and can pull the money out the next day. It takes two to three business days to get into the checking account. And the answer is yes. You can get it in a, in a couple days if you manually go in there and say, you know, go ahead and transfer my money now. Um, but I just don't, I let it accrue. And then in every two weeks, Etsy just automatically sends it over to my checking account. So yeah. Um, let's see. Glenda says, don't relist on deactivated, just activate it and you don't have to pay the 20 cents. Oh yes. Now what did I do? Did I hit, hit react right? Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> Um, Beauty for Ashley, do you have a scale to figure out shipping fees? I do. And when I first started, that that was like my biggest, hardest thing was the shipping. So I have, on a, my little scale is a Weight Watcher scale. It's a little one. And I, the first few times when I did it, I, you know, took it to the guy at the post office and had him double check my, my measurements. And he says, you know, mine is a little bit over. So I'm like, that's fine. Over, I can handle it by a little bit, you know. So... Yeah, it's a great investment. I don't know if I have a link to the, and I have another scale, a bigger one, um, but I'm not sure if I have a link down below. So, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, okay. Melissa says, I found, because I sell on Craigslist, uh, Craigslist, if I have stuff that doesn't sell for a long time, I unlist the item, then don't relist it till way later. I find that the item finds a new audience, yeah. Does eBay have calculated shipping? They do. You can choose to do the calculated shipping or you can choose to do like your set shipping. And I, I, I've I, always done my own set shipping, so you can do either way. I've tried the other way. I just like my way. I'm so used to it. I think that's probably why. Um, Jenny says, do you use printer tape, printer and tape t on your shipping labels, like tape them down, or do I use the pre-sticky labels? I used it for the longest time, for like a year. I did the paper with the tape, and then finally I just said, forget it, I got, the, I get the labels now. So yeah, I do the labels, yeah. Okay, wow, we're really cooking. I, don't, I haven't gotten to a lot of my other questions, but I'm happy that you guys are here asking questions, for sure. Let's see, we, we've got 66 viewers and 41 thumbs up. So go down there and just click it like that. Like Chris says, bona fides, like, Burn a calorie. <laughs> Click the like button. Jenny says, I still use paper and tape. Yeah, I mean, and there's times when I run out and you just got to do what you got to do, right? Okay, so next, uh oh, I think I scrolled down through my, okay. Oh, good, good, good. Um, Beasley wants to know, what is the deadline for getting the 40 free listings? I don't know. I, okay, hang on, Lorraine, I'm coming back to that. So I, I haven't seen when the, the, the eBay 40 free listings promotion is going to end. So if you're thinking about it, just go get it started and then you'll have those 40 free listings waiting for you. Right? <laughs> is that easy? I, I think, you know, it's pretty easy, I think. But Lorraine says you can order free printer labels from UPS. UPS, not USPS. UPS? All right, I'm going to look into that. So, like the ones you put in your printer? Do they have, say, UPS on them? Does it matter? I'm going to look into it. I'm going to look into it. Um, another question I get frequently is, how do I know when something is vintage? And generally, you can tell by the packaging. If there's not a date on it, um, you can tell by the packaging, you know, wh whether it's newer or older or get a feel for it. Or you can ask in a group, you know, like, hey, International League of Thrifters group, do you think this item is vintage? Um, another thing like with, with jewelry, a lot of times you can tell by the, the way the fixture, I always call them fixture, but they're not a fixture, the fasteners and things like that. However, I had a pair of earrings that I, I thought they were newer and it turned out they were like a hundred years old or something, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it never hurts to ask. And then if I'm really not sure, then I just err on the side of, yeah, I guess it's vintage, you know? So, I mean, yeah, generally I try to make sure though. Hey there, Henry. 
Um, Christian says, do you think that Americans buy from German eBay sellers or is that too far away? Too takes too much time for shipping, etc." I don't know. I think if you've got what they want, like, um, so Ken Chapman sells a lot of vintage items and antiques and things like that. Um, and he gets a lot of international, he's in the UK. So he gets a lot of international sales because the things that he finds, we're not, we don't find over here. Like some of the postcards or pins or, you know, like light fixtures and bra I mean, just stuff like that. You just don't find it here. Like I'm not wearing my wedding ring right now, but I, we bought my wedding ring off of Etsy. Um, and it was from a lady in the UK who goes to estate sales in Europe. And it was like this ring that she got in an estate sale in France, you know, and whew. so that was, I think so. If you've got what they want, they're going to buy. Yeah. Um, Lorraine says they have a lot of supplies for free at UPS and they deliver to your door. I'm going to look. Uh, Mary Lou, how old does it have to be to be classified as vintage? 1998 or before. It's so sad. Okay. Um, Marlo says, could you do a show with one of your vintage clothing friends on vintage dresses? I have a whole bin, but no clue. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Silver pirate. I'm vintage. I'm beyond vintage. I want to think about it. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to have to take a drink real quick. Wow, I've got to, I may have to make this a two-parter because we're pushing the hour here. Okay. Um, where did I leave off? Okay, D Diana Dunlap asked, I'd love to see a video explaining the difference between eBay and Etsy. Um, I, we kind of touched on that already, so that's good. Um, and then King Flip says, we have a project we need your help with. Let me know. I'm around. And I'm looking. Okay, we talked a little bit about the shipping. Oh, wow. We're going to get through this last question that I have here. So Rabbit Trails Treasures, I really want to learn about um, how you research and find keywords, especially for Etsy. I'm always looking forward to learning more about researching and listing jewelry. Okay, so when, I, when you make a listing on Etsy, let me show you mine. Uh, one of my listings. Let's... Where am I? Where am I? Let's go to my shop. Uh, home. Come on. Hello. Oh, dear. Okay. I'm not far over enough. There we go. My shop. So when you're looking to create a listing, and um, let's pull it up. Down at the bottom, I don't know if it's going to show on here. You can see, like, here are different keywords that went with this. Some of these are ones that I put in, and some of these are ones that Etsy put in. So let's say, because this is a big heart pendant, and I know I put, like, iridescent heart and blah, blah, blah. Here we go. So puffy heart necklace. Let's say I got the words. The spinning ball of death. There we go. So let's say I can't think of any more. Well, these are ones that pulled up. Okay, let's check out this one. And let's check out this one. And I'm going to see what kind of keywords they used. So I'll just go to their listing down to the bottom. And then I can see what they put. I am personally not a fan of just like these classic. Like who's just like searching classic, right? I mean, so I try to be more specific with my keywords. Like Puffy Heart Charm, Victorian Charm, Sterling Puffy Heart. So I'm looking for more like that. You know, what are people going to put in the search bar to look for you know that's that's what I do um okay uh oh um oh dear okay <laughs> I'm not sure what that means do I know <laughs> do I know how to apply studs I'm thinking you're talking about short studs and not like hot dudes <laughs> but if you need help with that I guess I can help you with that too so <laughs> Um, and then mommy reporter does Etsy have store options like eBay they they don't you automatically have a store and it's there's no like monthly fee for that um, but they do have something new that I haven't done yet where they're working on making like a website more look I haven't played with it yet um, silver pirate says we're like a fine wine Margaret we, we are better with age yeah um, Etsy is Glenda says Etsy is much better to see your views and what people are looking at yeah um, Kelly says the best way to do keywords or SEO is to think of how you would Google the item you're selling. Let's say pink bake light bracelet, put those words in. Exactly. Right. So when I see people's keywords that are like classic heart, 
like who's just going in searching classic like I'm not so um Etsy folks are getting ambitious with some of these pricing these days yeah they are but people will pay it okay and Henry says the max out listing is 999 is it really I just have never gotten that far are you sure if it is, then I'll have to have Texas Gal Treasures 2 shop or something like that. And Beauty for Ashley, what is your top selling item that you find more of? That's a good question. Um, gosh, it depends because I sell everything. Um, but I really I like selling men's accessories a lot, cufflinks and things like that, jewelry. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Marla says we worked you this hour. Yeah, we're thanks for going to be spoiled life fly from now on lol <laughs> Okay, so yeah, it's been an hour. I got through all my questions and I got through your questions, too um For a re for real girl. I'm selling clothes on eBay. What would be a, the best size poly mailer? I'm guessing this one depending this is one that I like what is that like 16 by 12 is that 12 or 10? Something like that. So that's 16 or 18 anyway one of those sizes um okay so i'm looking <laughs> thank you so much guys for coming over to watch if you didn't get to catch me live try uh click on subscribe and get notified when i go live so that you can come and hang out in the chat and be part of the conversation if you've got more questions about etsy leave a comment down below in the comment section um, after the show and Linda says, no, some shops have 13,000 items. That's what I thought. I was like, I think there's a lot of, people have a lot of items, but I didn't want to say until I was for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And hit that thumbs up button. And I will talk to you guys later. See you tomorrow. We'll be live tomorrow for merch talk at noon central. Come talk about merch. Bye.